Okay, let's talk about some of the calculations in this lab to make sure you understand what's going on. I've put some sample data down here. Uh, your data will probably look a little bit different and that's okay. I'm gonna explain how to do the problems using this data, but you should get the same idea with your data. So question number one, what's the mass of magnesium that reacted? That's simply the difference between our first two data points. So the mass of the empty dish and the mass of the dish plus the magnesium. So we should show our work, 38.3 minus 38.17 equals 0.13 grams of magnesium. The mass of the product that was formed, well, that's going to be the mass of the empty crucible and the mass of the product there. So 38. 0.63 minus 38.17 and that's 0.46 grams. Our next question, determine the mass of chlorine that reacted with the magnesium, right? So it says there in parentheses, difference between the product and the mass of magnesium. So we made a product, 0.46 grams, and used 0.13 grams magnesium. Well, where did the other reacting come from? Well, that must be the chlorine. So 0.46 product minus the 0.13 chlorine equals, what would that be, 0.33 grams of chlorine. Sorry, I think I said uh, magnesium for the 0.13 grams. The reaction is magnesium plus chlorine equaling magnesium chloride, and this X is what we're trying to figure out, that ratio of magnesium to chlorine. So question number four, determine the number of moles of magnesium that reacted. Well, there was 0.13 grams. So 0.13 grams of magnesium. The molar mass of magnesium is 24.3 grams. So 0.13 divided by 24.3. I'm going to have an extra sig fig here. If I look at 0.13, that's only two sig figs. So I'm going to have three sig figs here. So 0 0.00535 moles, moles of magnesium. And then question number five, determine the number of moles of chlorine that reacted. Well, we had 0.33 grams of chlorine. And we're only going to use 35.5 here. I know we talked last week about chlorine being a Hofbrinkle, being a diatomic. The difference being here is that it's uh, chlorine within a, um, that, that's a, a single atom of it. It's not a molecule of chlorine gas. It's chlorine that's part of a of an ionic compound that, that that's then reacting. So it's just the individual molar mass, not the combined molar mass. So 0.33 divided by 35.5 equals 0 0.009295, so I'm going to call it 930 moles of chlorine. Then what we want to do in question number six, this is how, this is our final answer here really, Right, we want to try to figure out that formula, that ratio. So it's simply going to be moles of um, chlorine over moles of magnesium. So 0 0.00930 moles of chlorine over 0 0.00535 moles of magnesium. I chose magnesium as the denominator because it's the smaller number. And so this equals 1.74. That's a ratio, so there's not a unit on that. But what that becomes is my x in that formula. So MgClx, that 1.74 becomes that x. So what's my formula here in my problem? MgCl 1.74. Then we go to the back side. And the backside is a little conclusion, 
right? So we're going to identify our answer. You're going to write this out in complete sentences. So you're going to identify your answer. I determined in this lab that the empirical formula for magnesium chloride was MgCl 1.74. Now yours is going to be probably a little bit different than that. Identify what the answer should be. If you remember from writing names and formulas, magnesium's got a two plus charge, chlorine's got a one minus charge, so they should cancel each other in a two to one ratio, two chlorines for every one magnesium, right? So that's what the right answer should be. And then identify a possible source of error, explain how it led to your answer being different from the quote unquote right answer did your data appear to have too much product or too little product, right? In this case, it appears as though my, my product is too, let, too little, right? So what in the procedure could have made it look like there's more product or too little product? In this case, I had too little product. And so really, there's, there's two errors that can happen. If we have too little, that's probably a case of some of our magnesium splattering out, not magnesium, but the, the liquid, so if this is my evaporating dish, you know, as it's, as it's boiling, as it's heating, what happens is sometimes it splatters out. And if you look around the hot plate, sometimes you can even see the splatters that are left down there, right? So that's product that has been lost. And so that's going to appear to be a ratio less than 2.2 .2 to 1. Now, the other mistake is that sometimes we don't heat it long enough. And what happens if we don't heat it long enough is that in our product, so in our apparent magnesium chloride, there's still some water that's left in there. And so that adds to the mass, right? So we either have too little mass in the evaporating dish afterwards or too much mass. If we have too little mass, it's because some of it has splattered out and that's gonna give us a ratio less than two. And if we have two more, it's because we have um, extra water that's left in there. We didn't heat it long enough. So you're going to identify the error that best matches your data and provide, uh, provide a, a written explanation of this. Right? So your conclusion should probably be about a paragraph long, a few sentences, right? answering these three different pieces.